In a world filled with information, where do you turn to get straight talk about retirement, investments, and your money? Lock it in to the longest-running financial talk show in Arkansas and let us help you build the bridge between information and application. Real financial change begins right here, and it starts with you. It's showtime! In an environment of low interest rates and all-time highs in the market, it can be tempting to run to perceived safe investments, especially if you're close to retirement. Why that could be the wrong move on today's show. This is the Get Ready for the Future show. Hi, everybody. Welcome. It is the Get Ready for the Future show. Thanks for watching online or if you're listening on radio. Glad to have you along. My name is Scott Inman. Along with us today, Teresa Arago and Candace Stanley. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing today? Doing well. Yeah, we've had a little bit of a chaotic start today, getting all the mics <laughs> and the equipment set, but we are ready to go. <laughs> yes. And, and we, we are ready to talk about uh, risk, basically. That's kind mm -hmm. of the overarching. We're going to talk a lot about CDs in this show, but really it's all about risk and perceived safety and is it really uh, low risk or no risk as it may be thought to be. And when you hear CDs... You may think certificate of deposit, or you may think compact disc. Mm. <laughs> I think of both, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you remember those? Does anybody remember those? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I, I would say, you know, less than 10 years from when the CDs started, all albums, all tapes just kind of disappeared. And we had talked the other day when we were planning about our first CDs, uh, Casey actually reminded me that they had these clubs, and I was part of one. Yeah. So when CDs <laughs> became a thing, I would uh, you got like twenty for a dollar ninety nine, and then you just had to buy the one they sent you every month, which was like twenty dollars. And I did that, but my first CD that I received was the Michael Jackson Best Hits, so I feel like oh. I chose well. Wow, yeah. Did that come out around that time? I'm trying to think, it too. Was, it was not his, like, greatest hits one. I also okay. have that one, if I'm being honest. Yep. Um, but it was, like, the up to that point. Okay. I'm, I was trying. I meant to look it up, and I didn't, when CDs actually came on the scene. Was it still the 80s, or was it right at mm. 90, early 90s, I think? That was my I first CD. I want to say 90s. early 90s. Yeah. So that's when we could I afford remember. Them. I, could, <laughs> could I still had them. some cassette tapes. Yep. In the, ni like, 1990. Yep. And I was still recording music off the radio onto my tape recorder yes. early in the 90s yeah. so it had so to have been around that yeah. time i hope man things yeah. have changed or i was I way behind <laughs> i still have my leather um cd uh oh yeah like rolodex thing me too in the top of my closet every now and i'll get that down and look at it i'm like dang that was good music i've still <laughs> got my boys to men Two album that <laughs> i got from that little club in there i have yeah. a lot of rock and alternative in there <laughs> do you do you remember your first one your first I don't CD? remember my first no. CD. No. You know what what was your favorite? Oh, go ahead. My favorite is probably my Bon Jovi CD. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Which album? Um, oh, gosh. Which one was it? It um, what was the country one. Uh, Blaze of Glory. Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, From yeah. Young yeah. Guns. Yeah, yeah, Young Guns. Okay. That's right. Nice. Mine was Aerosmith. Big ones. The big ones. Oh, it was yeah. the greatest hits, too. Solid collection. Yeah. That was the first, uh, first CD I had, and it would have been around 92-ish, I think, when that came out. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, CDs were big. And, you know, you mentioned cassettes. You, those fell by the wayside when CDs got big. And it took less than 10 years, though, for CDs uh, to eclipse the sales of both vinyl albums and cassette tapes. But today, look where we are. <laughs> you know, we're probably, if we have young people watching or listening today, they don't even know what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. It's probably a foreign language. Today, with streaming services and music on our mm -hmm. phones, you can't even hardly find a CD player. No. Do you even you even you can buy vehicles that don't even have CD players in them anymore. They went away. They're gone. Yeah, I had to hunt really really hard to find one for my kids when they were taking piano lessons because they had to have a CD player to mm -hmm. play the little tracks that go with it. It took me a while to find a CD player. Oh yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. Well, technology drove out compact discs when we're talking about those types of CDs. Technology hasn't driven away certificates of deposit as we talk mm -hmm. about CDs, bank CDs. And people are still getting them, but mm -hmm. they are certainly less appealing than they used to be back when compact discs came on the scene, right? Yes. I mean, interest rate, the interest rate environment now has made CDs very unappealing. But when people think about uh, putting their money, parking their money somewhere in a perceived safe place, mm -hmm. that is still the place that they're going to think of first, even though when you look at rates, the average national CD rates, a six-month, this is unbelievable to even say, six-month CD rate, the average national rate is 0.18%. A one year is 0.33%. We're not getting in front of the decimal yet. It won a five year. Mm -hmm. You park your money for five years, the average right now is 
percent. And to be clear, mm-hmm. doing that longer term, you can't pull it out without losing money. Yeah. So you're giving it up for that period of time, and you're getting less than a, a right at a half a percentage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's insane to me that mm-hmm. that's the best you can get right now in that environment. So. Well, and you it's think hard. about and yeah, and you think about if you if you park your money for five years, the chance of rates going up is is pretty mm-hmm. good mm-hmm. over that time span. All over the last five years, we expected them to go up, but we're we're at all time lows. So, the the idea for this show is really about risk it, more than safety. I mean, uh, CDs are safe, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you're going to get your principal back, but it's it's the risk, the perception that you are taking on no risk because you're going to get your principal back is kind of what we want to explore today. And, and we mentioned in the open there, when you talk about markets being at uh, or near, I guess we did have a little bit of a pullback. So we're near all-time highs. All the major indices are very close to all-time highs, and that gets people worried about mm-hmm. what's happening next. You look at bond yields. Uh, you look at interest rates. There is not a very attractive environment to go to to stay safe and still get a nice return. Or is there? We're going to explore that too. But it does – create this and we talk to clients all the time about this Mm -hmm. that there is this desire to have their extra money Um, we're mostly talking about non-qualified money here right we're not talking about money in Mm -hmm. in your iras or in your 401ks it's money that you've accumulated and saved above and beyond what you're going to have in your normal savings account now i think the progression here it should be worth pointing out that we do want you to have an emergency fund yes uh, in cash Mm -hmm. that wouldn't be in this discussion okay yes because Mm -hmm. you shouldn't have it in a cd anyway if it's intended for emergencies then you need to be able to deploy it quickly and having it locked up in anything is not a good plan right so definitely we're not talking about emergency savings here yeah so we are talking about above and beyond that having a three to six month uh stash of cash should you need to pay expenses but a lot of people we talk to they have accumulated a lot of money on the sidelines mm-hmm. and they don't know what to do with it yeah some people it just makes them feel safe just to have a whole lot even more than that six months mm-hmm. maybe even a couple of years worth of expenses yes. saved up just because it makes them feel good but that's where we run into problems with interest mm-hmm. and the environment we're in now with the pandemic you know that that's always amazing to me when you think about if you look at what savings rates have done during a time when many people have been out of work but a lot of people have not been out of work. And then they also got supplemental yes. unemployment checks, right? So they did have maybe a little bit more mm-hmm. money to stash away. But listen to these numbers. April of 2020, the savings rate was at a record high of 33.7%. Mm-hmm. It was a year and a half ago. Of course, that was the beginning of the pandemic. But if you look at that in comparison to December of the year before, that's over quadruple the savings rate of December of 2019. So people have certainly begun... Uh, saving again because they are, don't know. Anytime you get uncertain about the future, and obviously we should always be <laughs> fairly uncertain about the future, right? But when things like this happen, you look at the 2008 financial crisis, you mm-hmm. look at now during the pandemic as we come out of it, and hopefully we're coming out of it, um, people are really stockpiling cash, and it does beg the question of do they have a plan for it? Yeah, and if you don't have a purpose and a plan for it, then you're more likely to struggle with how to deploy it properly. Right. Um, you know, we CDs aren't all bad. You, you know, if you are the type of person that you've gotten that money during the pandemic and you're going, man, I'm going to spend it if it stays in my bank account and you want to kind of lock it up, that might be a good way to do it. There are other ways to accomplish that goal, too. Um, but, you know, if you're if you're sitting in, you know, thirty thousand dollars sitting in your bank account and you're getting less than half a percent or less than a quarter percent for some of these, is that really the best plan for you? Because there's more than just loss of principal that can affect you in retirement and in life in general when it comes to your financial journey. We mentioned the financial crisis. I had a, a family member whose husband passed away, and mm-hmm. he told her before he passed away, he passed away probably in uh, 2007, mm-hmm. and he told her, his wife, you know, keep this money in CDs every year when it comes to take off the interest, live off of it, and then roll it back, the principal back into another CD. Well, well then the financial crisis hit, mm-hmm. and that's not feasible anymore. Mm-hmm. But there was such a belief in CDs Mm-hmm. This family member would not listen. Mm-hmm. No, this is what my husband told me. So if there's still that thought, you know, in some people these days, those are the people we need to talk to and, and, and just teach them and educate them that, 
you know, you have another risk that you're not thinking about. And we have the same kind of bias sometimes when it comes to bonds. People who said, well, I just stick it in bonds and live off the interest. But we talked about this already. Interest rates are not where they used to be. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that strategy has to fit where we are now, not where we were 20 years ago, even five years ago. Those interest rates have an impact on those um, dividends that you're getting or the interest that you're getting off of it. So you have to be where you need to be for today's market. Your time horizon and mm -hmm. how prox uh, your proximity to your retirement date, I think, has a lot to do with people's feeling about risk. And we're going to get into that. But before we do that, let's just talk about it from an income perspective. Mm -hmm. Is there a better way to generate more income? So let's say this is just sideline money. And we're going to assume there's purpose for it uh, in a more intermediate goal than, than part of your retirement income, because we're going to talk about that, how that applies mm -hmm. in just a minute. But this so-called safety of a CD could actually introduce far more risk mm -hmm. than investors anticipate, especially if the funds in maturing CDs are set to automatically roll over into another CD. So where else might there be uh, some better options? You know, we, we explore this all the time for our clients. As we mentioned, we get calls saying, hey, I've got $100,000 sitting in this CD, it's about to mature, and I can't get, because that's the other thing, too. Yeah. A lot of these CDs were started when rates were better, right? Mm -hmm. And now they're coming out, and they don't have any option uh, with those dismal rates. But there are some things you can do that would still pr protect the principal mm -hmm. um, and get a little bit better interest rate. Yes, and so this would apply specifically to people who are 59 and a half or older, yep. um, because there is a difference if you're not. But there are fixed annuities out there that can beat those CD rates, even on shorter terms. You know, we just pulled those rates the other day, and there's some out there that for a two-year term, you can get over 2%. So if you've got some money that you need to sideline for a short period of time, and you don't want to get 0.57% or 0.3% interest, that may be an option to explore for you as one of those fixed annuity products out there. Um, and, you know, there's, depending on how long you want to go there's some that have a little more but interest rates where they are we can at least beat that a little bit even without taking on more risk now that has to be so it needs to be sideline money that's not needed for your yes. retirement plan we said that kind of up front but i want to reiterate that so maybe for a short-term goal to just protect that and again to highlight what you said about the 59 and a half mm -hmm. part of that because any any annuity that yes. you that you open a contract for or purchase a contract for it's going to require to withdraw those funds without penalty uh, to for you to be 59 and a half so you need to be at least two years away anyway yeah. right from yeah. 59 and a half when you put those money uh, monies in if you're going to put it in there for two years so there's 2.15 there um, but then you also have you know, if you're willing to take on some other, a little bit more risk, and I don't want to downplay the fact that there is not the protection of principal guaranteed here, but in a more intermediate setting, if you're looking at more of a five to 10 year time frame that maybe you're looking to put money away, there's also the idea of dividend paying stocks. There's, mm -hmm. you know, you can get some, obviously if you're in the stock, it's going to fluctuate. It, mm -hmm. it could, the, the value, the share price is going to go up and down, but some of those dividends are way more attractive than interest rates. And there's way to, ways to diversify by using mutual funds or other products out there too, but something that has a dividend kick to it that mm -hmm. you can utilize how you need it is, is another way to avoid that, especially if you're again under that 59 and a half bar you're not worrying about those penalties. You have the ability to get back in it um, if you need to for that. I've got some people who use mutual funds for like their house fund. Mm -hmm. They're going to buy a house, but it's not going to be for five more years. So instead of sticking it in the bank and getting almost nothing, they've got it deployed in some mutual funds, you know, to kind of help with some diversification, but also give them more than they could get sitting in the bank. There are also ETFs. Uh, exchange traded funds that are very tax efficient also since mm -hmm. we're not talking about IRA money um, very often we'll have a client call and say you know I've got this money sitting in savings I would just like it to make a little bit more and so we might look at ETS for that as well mm -hmm. and there are also an, there's another real estate class uh, that yes. are there is the real estate asset class I was going to say there's another asset class a lot of people think about just stocks and bonds being mm -hmm. the only asset classes available but real estate is a place too not hard real estate, but there are alternative investments such as real estate investment trust uh, that pay a very attractive uh, distribution rate. It's not a dividend. It's yeah. not guaranteed. Gotta love our jargon. Yes, and <laughs> there are disclosures that go along with that. They may not be right for you, but that is just in general something that we can bring up too because there's also with non-qualified money tax advantages to that. Uh, not all of that distribution is going to be considered taxable because of the real estate component mm -hmm. of it, and there's a certain depreciation part of that. You need to talk to your tax advisor to find out more about that but there is an opportunity for higher income with uh, that type of mm -hmm. investment too some of the distribution rates on those type of investments are above five percent now of course there is risk to principal uh, with that so you have to weigh that all but if it's not just about income if it's about just 
trying to figure out your overall plan. That's really where we want to go next. We're up against a break, but we're talking about finding the appropriate amount of risk in this environment. We'll continue right after this. A game warden noticed how a particular fellow named Sam consistently caught more fish than anyone else. The successful fisherman invited the game warden to come along with him and observe. So the next morning, the two fellows met at the dock and took off in Sam's boat. When they got to the middle of the lake, Sam stopped the boat and the warden sat back to see how it was done. Sam's approach was really simple. He took out a stick of dynamite, lit it, and threw it in the air. The explosion rocked the lake with such a force that dead fish immediately began to surface. Sam took out a net and started scooping them up. Well, you can imagine the reaction of the game warden. When he recovered from the shock of it all, he began yelling at Sam. He said, hey buddy, you can't do this. I'll put you in jail. You'll be paying every fine there is in the book. The game warden was just incredulous. Sam, meantime, just simply sat down his net, took out another stick of dynamite. He lit it, tossed it this time in the lap of the game warden with these words. Are you going to sit there all day complaining or are you going to fish? For some of us, the same question could be asked about our retirement. This is John Shrewsbury with Genwealth Financial Advisors. Whether it's trying to find the best investment or just worrying about the stock market, A lot of folks seem frozen with retirement indecision, and that very well could lead to an explosion of your own, an explosion of your dreams for a comfortable future. Plan now for your time on the lake or wherever your dreams take you. nothing yet buckle up because we're back with the get ready for the future show the fear of the markets and perceived risk can drive a lot of people to safety we're talking about cds and are they really as safe as they sound and other ways to really uh, address risk as you uh, walk through your uh, journey towards financial independence and especially if you're close to that retirement date it can be very tempting to try to take all the risk off the table. But is that really the right idea? Welcome back to the Get Ready for the Future show. My name is Scott Inman, along with Teresa Arago and Candace Stanley uh, today. did want to mention, too, if you are on track towards retirement and you want to get some idea of where you stand, we do have a great tool. It's a free tool for you. It's called the 15-Minute Retirement Checkup. And you can get it one of two ways. You can go online and get it by going to 15-Minute retirement.com and that's using the numbers one five and then spelling out minute retirement.com or you can actually text the word checkup to the number 501-381-5228 that's 501-381-5228 it's a great little quick way take you less time than it does to check your social media to figure out really where am i am i on track what do i need to do and it may spur some questions And if you want to then reach out to a GenWealth Financial Advisor, one will actually uh, be available to you. You can uh, do that through that 15-minute retirement tool. We can get in touch with you that way. But if you don't want to do that, or if you want to just reach out to us directly, you can do that through email, info at getreadyforthefuture.com, or you can call us toll-free anywhere, 866-653-PLAN. That's 866-653-7526 to set up a complimentary first appointment with a GenWealth Financial Advisor. So back to the risk topic, and I've told this story before, many workshops. I don't know if I've told it that many times on the radio, but there is obviously, uh, there are a number of ways that you can deal with risk. We have basically identified four. You can accept it, take all of the risk, which Mm -hmm. is probably not a good idea. You can avoid the risk, which is kind of what we're talking about with the CD discussion here today. And are you really avoiding it? Are you really avoiding one risk but taking on other risks, and we're going to Mm -hmm. talk about that as well. You can manage the risk, which is what we believe in doing, and you can also transfer the risk, and we can talk about what that uh, is about a little bit later on in the show. But I use the story of me jumping out of an airplane, with a parachute, by the way, and with a tandem jumper, actually. (laughs) Years ago, when I first got into the broadcasting business, uh, my first job was in Quincy, Illinois, 1996, and I had always kind of thought about 
that that was kind of a bucket list thing for me to do. I wanted to be able to do that at least once and see what it was like. To jump out of a totally okay airplane yeah, for to, no good reason. Yes, okay. exactly. Just, just clarifying. Yes. It makes <laughs> no <laughs> sense to me, it's but really, okay, you do really, you. It's really <laughs> technically a skydive is what it oh. is. So you're not just jumping out of an airplane. But so they had this, I don't know why in Quincy, Illinois, but they had the world's free fall convention where people That's came from all around. Yeah, I guess okay. because it was a flat area and mm-hmm. there was long runways. But anyway, people would come from all around and they would skydive like all weekend. Hmm. And they offered a chance for the publicity of having a story done on the news. They offered a reporter a chance to go and get a free jump, right? Okay. So I took advantage of it mm-hmm. and did a story on it. And I did about one hour of training before I actually went up for the jump, which I thought was a really kind of a small amount of training. I don't <laughs> yeah. know that I was fully like ready. There's a lot you need to learn in, in 60 a minutes. short period of time. But we took the training, and I went up, and I was connected to uh, a, a professional. So it was mm-hmm. a tandem jump, right? He was really doing most of the work, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I took the training, but he was going to do most of the work. And I remember being in that airplane, and like you said, a perfectly good airplane. And, and I was the only uh, amateur in here. Oh. The other people in the plane were going to be coming out and doing formations and you know they were professional oh. jumpers so when we got to altitude and they throw up the uh, door those guys were out in 12 seconds you know <laughs> boom 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 boom, and it's just me and the tandem guy that I'm attached to and he's literally <laughs> dragging me over to the opening because I, at this point I'm not real sure if I want to do it and I stare out over this green uh, blue sky and green land below and have to make the decision is this really what I want to do mm-hmm. so when you talk about the ways to deal with risk I could I could have accepted it and really just not had that tandem jumper and just you know not even had a jump with parachute, a parachute right parachute and hope for the best yes that's clearly not going to happen I could have avoided the risk and turned around that's my vote yeah that's what you would have done <laughs> that's my vote. Yeah, I'd avoid that turn around and gone back in <laughs> and said I don't want to do it but it was my goal Mm-hmm. to skydive yeah. right yeah. so when you think about it in the in the money world in the investment world what are your goals and are mm-hmm. you going to be able to achieve your goal by avoiding risk you could manage the risk uh which is why i had a parachute and mm-hmm. you could transfer the risk which is why i had the guy knew, who knew, knew what he, he was, was doing, doing attached. attached to me so mm-hmm. everything worked out fine I, I have a video of it somewhere which is um probably not watchable because it's on vhs i was so. about to ask if it's vhs yeah, <laughs> it is yeah it was the 90s so anyway that's for my those s- out there who don't know what vhs is before <laughs> yeah. we had the yeah. dvds that's what we used yes <laughs> so my point is is that you know you have to deal with risk in one of those four ways and that's kind of really where this show is going when you talk about the the cd component of it because that's considered avoiding risk Mm -hmm. but Teresa there are other risks you're taking on yes and there's two big ones when we're talking about CDs that you need to be mindful of one of those is taxes and the other is inflation because that is taxable that growth is taxable to you and then you have inflation on top of that so if it sat still for five years and you're getting 0.57 percent for that CD inflation is not below 0.57 so you're losing purchasing power oh and by the way whatever amount you walked away with for your you know growth on that is taxable so you're gonna have to pony up with the IRS on that part too so it's a double whammy that affects it and we have a graphic that we can show you um, for those of you that are watching on Facebook here that kind of illustrates this uh, looking at 2016 through 2020 and what those returns looked like and, and back then you were even getting a little bit more on that 12 month CD than you could now but you can see here that that return was actually negative because we're not overcoming taxes and we're not overcoming inflation on those so it's really important to understand that when you try to avoid one risk you're often going to be taking on other risks and when we're talking about a retirement period or a long-term goal that inflation risk just becomes more important because you've got a longer period of time for it to affect your buying power those are startling numbers and you aren't it I think points out that you're not avoiding the risk by putting Mm -hmm. especially too much money in a CD again we do want to iterate that it can be a useful tool if you have a short-term goal for part of your money that that's not what we're saying never you never use a CD but if you are a flying to safety in your mm-hmm. mind, then that's what you're giving up right there. So what is the answer? And well, and I think before we even get into that, I mm-hmm. think it's important to understand that sometimes you don't really understand the product fully that you're getting into. Yep. And so if you don't understand what you're really committing to, that's where the issue lies. If the CD is the right tool that you need for the project you're working on, that's different. But if I walked in here with a hammer trying to screw something to the wall, it's not going to work and it's going to create damage. So having the right tool is the key. Before we even talk about what the the right tool is, I wanted to make sure you understood that. And the investment strategy really should be built around the overall plan. 
And, yes. and, and that's what we do here. We mentioned our number, our toll-free number is 866-653-PLAN. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason for that is because we believe the plan should dictate our overall investment strategy. And when that plan is built, there may be some room for a CD, mm-hmm. right? We're not saying, again, to exclude CDs from your overall portfolio. But when you're thinking about the goals, and, and we're going to talk a little bit more about retirement being the goal, because I think that's mm-hmm. when the risk aversion really kicks in. Mm-hmm. I've, I met with, uh, uh, well, more than one, but I'm thinking of one appointment that Tim and I had in Little Rock just a little while back. At the beginning of the pandemic, this gentleman was probably about two or three years away from wanting to retire. Mm-hmm. And he came to us and he had already moved in the middle of the pandemic all of his 401k money to cash because Mm -hmm. he saw it going down. And I understand that mentality. You see something go down and you don't know when it's going to come back up and you know that you're going to begin needing at least some of that in the near term. In your mind, you think about, I don't have time for Mm -hmm. it to recover, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because if the market doesn't come back, then I'm going to have 20 to 30% less assets for retirement. And I, mm-hmm. and I understand that. And you certainly don't want to be 100% yeah. in the market when you're that close to retirement. So mm-hmm. what, are, what, is, what, is the, what is the answer to that? So you talked about this. It's the plan. Yeah. I have a client who retired into the pandemic. And it was hard for him and his wife when we were talking through this and we were moving those assets. for the, They were going, can we do this? Because we called to make the rollover call and then the market dumped basically in in like 24 hours so it was the worst timing you would think for us to do that but we were very quick to get it reinvested and uh, the way I kind of explain that to people is you're getting off the elevator on one floor and you're just getting right back on the elevator you can ride it back up with the market just don't stay there don't Mm -hmm. let it just sit in cash if you've taken a hit you talked about this you know that plan the way that we plan and we're going to go into more detail if I don't need that money for the next five years it doesn't necessarily matter that it took a hit because we've got time to recover. Even if you think of 2008, it only took about two years for it to start running again. And that was a pretty impactful one for us. Um, So I think you need to remember that not all of your 401k is needed right away. And there are steps you can take even before retirement that we can talk about to kind of prep yourself so that when those things happen, if it does happen early in your retirement, which is when it's the most impactful, you have a strategy in place already to limit that. Yeah. There's been too many people that have that let fear dictate what they do with their portfolio and when they see the market go down and have gotten out and stayed there mm-hmm. and missed that ride back up. Yes. And I've I have a particular client in mind that I'm thinking of right now who ended up having to work longer because she let it sit too long mm-hmm. in a uh, too conservative portfolio and miss so much growth going up she could have retired years earlier but she kind of shot herself in the foot and mm-hmm. so we don't need to let fear dictate those types of things that's what advisors are for is to be that objective third party to help you um, take the emotion out of that and help you plan well and when I think about your skydiving story something that's kind of struck me is you had a plan yeah. Really, I mean, Kinda, you had sort more of. or less. You had <laughs> some safeguards in place. Yeah, you yeah. had an idea of what you were getting into, and had you stayed in that plane, you would have missed an opportunity that I'm sure once you were done and safe on the ground, you are glad you did. Mm-hmm. That's been my experience. When I go into something and I feel like I have a good plan in place, even if there's chaos around it, you know, I can push myself to keep going. But when I don't have a plan and I enter it kind of nebulously that's when it's easy to get disheartened or discouraged and and walk away from what I really want. Mm -hmm. We talked about the mentality of not having time Mm -hmm. for the money to come back. I think it would help too for people to think of their retirement date as not the end of something, but the beginning of something. Because you are going to, at least from a planning perspective, be in retirement for a significant amount of time, let's say 20, 25, maybe even 30 years. Mm -hmm. So part of you, part of your investments is still that 20 or 30 something investor, right? They are still are going to have time for the recovery Mm -hmm. with that portion of your investment dollars. I think that helps sometimes when you Mm -hmm. think about it because retirement is the end for most people. It's the beginning of their retirement, but from an investment perspective, they think it's the end and they need to take all risk off the table. So we'll talk a little bit more in depth about what that plan looks like when we come back on the Get Ready for the Future show. At Gen Wealth, one of our standards is that we're life changers. 
We believe one of the best ways to change your life is to educate yourself. George Washington Carver said that education is the key that unlocks the golden door of freedom. Let that soak in for just a moment. Think about the changes that you can make by learning more, specifically learning more about your money. We are passionate about education. We believe that it has the potential to change not only one life, but generations to come. There's always been power in standing up for what you believe in, challenging the status quo, and never accepting the ordinary. What about the rest of your life? Will you settle? Or will your retirement be more? More fun, more family than finances, more than just investments. Connect with us at GenWealth and harness the power of more. There are a ton of financial resources on GetReadyForTheFuture.com. No? Well, bookmark that page for later because the Get Ready For The Future show is back. Scott, in and along with Teresa Arago and Candace Sandley on the Get Ready For The Future show today, talking about risk and the perception of avoiding it by putting it into CDs. Uh, not we. I feel like we're railing against CDs sometimes. We're not doing that. They can still be useful for certain short-term goals. But with interest rates where they are, does it make sense to be in there with too much of your money just because you want to feel safe? And it mm -hmm. needs to become part of your overall retirement plan or your overall financial plan. One of the other risks I think uh, that we should talk about when it comes to CDs, Teresa, is the risk of not paying attention to it. Because, yes. because let's say you were in a five-year CD back, you know, five years ago, you probably were getting a little bit better interest rate, maybe mm -hmm. not a whole lot, but you were getting a little bit better if you had good timing about two plus years ago and thinking last part of 2018 mm -hmm. we actually saw rates get up above two and a half three percent on long-term so CDs, long ago right which now. would be incredible to get right now yeah so let's say you had one of those mm -hmm. and they're coming up for maturity and you're not paying attention here's the thing they they send you a notification and if you're on electronic notifications it might even just be an email but they're going to send you a notification that says x date is when this matures what do you want to do Often, not always, but often what happens is if you don't respond, then they're just going to roll it into a new contract that matches the one you left. So if you were in a five-year CD, it's going to roll into a new five-year CD with whatever came out of it. The issue there is if you were planning for a specific goal and you needed that liquid, it's now tied up again and you'd have to pay some sort of penalty to get back out of it. So it's really important that if you do have one of those, that you do something to help yourself remember when it's going to mature so you don't let it roll back into a new one unnecessarily. And that's going to roll into a new one at the current interest rate. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's so it's important. not like you get to repeat what you did. Right. You get whatever's the new and, and right now not so exciting rate. Yep. So... We talked about getting more in-depth with the planning discussion. Mm -hmm. The overall plan, let, let's assume again that the main goal is retirement, which is for 90 plus 95, 98% of our clients. That's really what we're planning for. Mm -hmm. Wherever they are in life, they may be in their 20s or 30s, but that's still the ultimate goal is to save up enough assets to create an income stream uh, to let them live without a paycheck for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk specifically about the people who are very close to uh, that goal, maybe five to 10 years out. You're in the retirement red zone. You've heard us talk about that before. The investment strategy up until inside of 10 years away from your uh, targeted retirement date is pretty much a growth strategy. Mm -hmm. You're trying to accumulate assets and ride the volatility of the market out because you have time. But we talked about the story of the clients in the last segment that uh, got really fearful when the market went down during the pandemic and took all of their money out. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a all in or all out mentality that we deal with. The answer is a diversified strategy. And mm -hmm. we're going to talk a little bit about that because it gets built with the idea of retirement is not an asset problem. It mm -hmm. is essentially an income problem. Yeah, I mean, during your working years, you're trading your time for a paycheck. It's that simple. You give the time to your employer, you do the tasks, you get a paycheck. 
all you're doing in retirement is you're trying to get your paycheck without having to give up your time. And that paycheck still needs to be consistent, or at least a part of it does. So when you're getting ready for retirement, the first step that we do when we're planning for people is we do what we call a gap analysis. We're going to see what are your monthly expenses that you have to pay no matter what the market's doing and what resources do you have to provide for those? Because if those two don't balance out, we need to take care of that before we even move on because things like last year are going to happen. And in March, you know, we had a lot of people say, oh, did you get a lot of phone calls? I can honestly say I didn't. Didn't either. Um, at least not from my retirees because the main thing they were dealing with as far as frustration level is that they used to go out every Tuesday night and now they can't because the restaurant's closed. Mm -hmm. But their income was still good. Mm -hmm. When you think about, Candace, the idea of that income being guaranteed in a portion of your income anyway, we call it required income. Right. We, we hope that retirees are going to go into that stage of their life without any debt, with um, get rid of their mortgage, no car payment, but there's going to be a certain level of expenses that they're going to have to provide for, and Social Security may not be enough. That's right. And then we also want to talk about your desired income. This is where inflation comes into play. With your desired income, what would you like to have on top of those guaranteed sources? Uh, so we want guaranteed sources to meet your required income need, but then we might want to have a desired income where we want to enjoy our retirement. And so we'll want to segment what assets you still have into conservative, moderate, and growth, just for example. So you never want to get completely out of growth mode. A plan is not to be completely conservative or completely in growth mode. Like Scott said, we wanted to be diversified and spread out that risk. And just like we talked about with emergency funds, those need to be where you can readily deploy them. That income piece that yeah. you're going to need that first five years in retirement, we don't want it going all over the place when the market does. So we're treating it differently than money you don't need for 16 years because there's a, a big difference in what you need from that. But we have to have some growth if we're going to beat inflation over time. That's right. So we've got to have some pieces deployed for that, too. The idea here is a plan that attacks. We go back to the, the risk discussion. Mm -hmm. We talked about inflation, and that is one of the three big risks that all retirees will face. And that's why we were showing you that graph earlier about the erosion uh, the, of the real return of a CD, because inflation will eat that up. And mm -hmm. we are certainly in... Uh, the reality of that right now as we look at inflation being at decades high numbers yes. hopefully it's going to moderate we still believe that it's a bit transitory but inflation is always going to be real and that is a risk that retirees must battle so that's the reason for the growth component because your income is going to need to increase over time just to maintain the current purchasing power you have in year one the other one we talked about but we really didn't identify was timing risk. And that's why people get fearful when the market goes mm -hmm. down because if the market goes down and you are all in equities, mm -hmm. and even if you're not, quite frankly, you can be in a diversified portfolio of 60-40, let's say 60% equities and 40% fixed income, and you could still get hammered on the beginning of your retirement. Timing risk is basically you don't, want, you don't know what the market's going to do in those yeah. first few months. But you talked about it, Teresa, one of the clients that did it. The plan was in place. Mm -hmm. The required income number didn't move. The desired right. income didn't move because where you were taking it from, mm -hmm. controlling what you sell and when you sell it mm -hmm. can help you endure that. And when you think of that old 60-40 blend that people used to work with, that was not this interest rate in mm -hmm. environment. That's right. You know, back when bonds were paying 5 and 6%, that could work, but they don't right now. Just like everything else, interest rates affect those bonds. But, yes, you know, if you've got money – that you don't need for a while and the market dips, you're not going to be emotionally driven to make decisions. If you have that plan in place that you know that, then it helps. That's why our bucketing strategy, you know, I have clients when I do their review, we talk about each account based on what we're trying to accomplish, not just, hey, here's what you got last year. I have no control over what the market's going to do, whether it's going to go mm -hmm. up or it's going to go down. Just like when I leave this building, I have no control over what the other drivers on the road are going to do. But what I can do is I can wear my seatbelt and I can have the right kind of training to know how to handle an emergency if I need to, just like the plan. The plan is there to have the right seatbelt, to have the right products working for the right purpose and being unique to you. You know, the process is the same for everybody, but the specifics are unique to the client. Yeah, and this is probably why we didn't have a lot of phone calls when there was that dip in the market, because we have clients who understand their plan. And when the market is dropping or going up or dropping, we don't have a lot of um, clients who panic because they know that the money that is down with the market, they don't need for about 15 years or more. We have mm -hmm. already shored up income for at least 10 or 15 years. 
before, and that gives it time to recover. And I think one thing that I have encountered a lot lately because the market's been doing so well for so long is when I show people the plan and I show them their income plan, they go, man, why are you only trying to get 8% mm. in that 25 year bucket? <laughs> And what I explained to them is we're shooting for a repeat of the worst 25 years. Mm. If we get the worst 25 years again, your plan works. Yep. Chances mm -hmm. are we're going to beat it. If we have any more you know, repeats of the last 10, there's a good chance we'll beat it. But I don't want to have to come back to you and go, just kidding. Uh, we're going to have to cut your income. I don't want to have to do that. Yeah. And the, when we talk about just to wrap up the timing risk component of the discussion here, there there are graphs that we use that we look at actual data that it shows that it can make a difference in an exact uh, duplicated investment strategy between two people who retire mm -hmm. with the same amount of money invested the same amount of way, the same same way and withdrawing the same amounts annually but they got their returns in different orders. Mm -hmm. They retired in different years. Mm -hmm. One year can make the difference on 18 years later, one guy's broke and the other guy has more money than he started with, mm -hmm. twice as much as he started with in the example that mm -hmm. I'm thinking about. And there's even data out there that shows that it's not just what year you retire. It can be month to month inside yes. of the same year yes. if you don't break apart that portfolio and just randomly withdraw from it and have a more diversified, more robust investment strategy and clearly identify where you're going to be withdrawing the money from. And I think the key is a lot of people make a mistake with equating products with a strategy. When yeah. we say, what's your plan? Mm -hmm. They go, well, here's my portfolio. Well, that's not a plan. It's, it's the tools behind the plan. But what's the actual plan? What's the purpose of this investment? And often people don't know it because they weren't being educated on those purposes or maybe there wasn't a purpose beyond just growing it and hoping for the best mm -hmm. so that's where that market strategy that we utilize i feel like is really critical and and when i've done studies it's backed that up that if you understand the purpose and if you're being educated you're more likely to stay focused on the long-term goal and that's where people really win that third and final risk as we have about a minute and a half here left in this segment is longevity risk because mm -hmm. that's the other key component to this is we don't know how long anyone is going to live. I tell people all the time in, in the client meeting room, if you tell me your date of death, we can build a perfect retirement plan. Mm -hmm. Nobody can do that. So the, the plan has to be perpetual. You know, I think about this in like the, the Monte Carlo simulations that are very yes. popular, right? You can run these all these different scenarios of what might happen to your investments over various market conditions. And if you, based on the year you've decided to die, mm -hmm. end up with a dollar, you have a successful, successful. you have a successful <laughs> retirement plan. Well, you can't really bank on that because you don't know that you're you're going to die at 85 years old. Mm -hmm. Many people think they'll die before that, but what if you don't? It's great to plan for it and it not happen rather than not plan for it and it happen. Yes, and I've had clients who say, well, pff, I'll never make it that far, but you might. Yep. And, and you may not make it that far in the current state you're in, but what if you have a long-term care event late in your retirement and we haven't planned anything else? Mm -hmm. If we've only planned for that period of time and we don't have that other bucket that just sits and grows, we've got nowhere else to pull from. Some people say, well, I'm not trying to make my kids rich. And let's just be clear, an inheritance is not a retirement plan either for those of you that are out there and you're younger. <laughs> but I'd much rather leave something behind than become a burden to my kids because I didn't plan well. Inflation risk, timing risk in the market, and longevity risk. Your retirement plan should attack all three of those risks, a plan for that in your retirement income plan. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. We were up against a break, but the perception of safety, I hope that we've been clear today, is not uh, maybe exactly what you think it was. The Get Ready for the Future show continues right after this. The beauty of a potter's work is that each item is unique. No piece is the same. That's what makes it art. At GenWealth, we believe your financial plan should be unique to you. Through our process, your money is carefully shaped around your goals and dreams, your future artfully crafted. Call us today or visit our website and connect with us. GenWealth Financial Advisors.
Want more straight talk about retirement, investments, and your money? Listen to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Now back to the Get Ready for the Future show. And if you want to find out more about the markets and the economy, uh, your investments, your money, we've got another resource for you that can come right into your email inbox. You know, we used to do the fastest four minutes in investing as a part of the Get Ready for the Future show. It was a needed four-minute segment uh, because we were on two uh, radio stations at the time in Little Rock in central Arkansas. And because of their formatting, one of them had four more minutes for us than we had for the other. So we actually uh, produced that sh- part of the Get Ready for the Future show then and called it the fastest four minutes in investing. Well, we have kept that, even though we no longer need that on our radio broadcast. It is now a video uh, that gets sent right to your inbox. We've renamed it the fastest four minutes in finance because we want to talk about broader things other than just the markets and the economy and investing. In fact, this week's fastest four is about orphaned 401ks. You know, there is a, a bill in the Senate right now that is kind of a, I don't want to say competing, more of a complimentary bill to one that's in the House of, it's the one in the House is being dubbed Secure Act 2.0. You know, there was a Secure Act at the beginning of January 2020 Mm -hmm. that was passed that made some changes to retirement rules. This is kind of the next version of that. Uh, The Senate bill is uh, a complement to that because they usually reconcile it into one before they Mm -hmm. pass it. But one of the features in there is to create a national database for people to find their old accounts. That's but actually a really good one. I think, I think it's a good idea. So I was worried you were going to say they're going to be able to take them over if you leave them alone for too long. That's no. more like what they would do. But, but I'm glad to hear that. Well, what was kind of astounding to me was is doing the research for the, the piece is that there are an estimated, this was five years ago, data from five years ago, estimated 70,000 retirement accounts that are unclaimed. But, you know, my initial response is, oh, wow. But mm-hmm. how often... Are people switching jobs nowadays? Right. And are they really thinking about that small account they had there when they moved to the next job? And then by three or four changes, do you even remember who the vendor was, especially if you've moved, it, you know, keeping up with that? No, I met with a client this week and he said, I have, I've got an old plan with my old job. I don't know how to find it. Mm-hmm. And he he uh, said it was with another uh, company and, and we we're like, OK, well, uh, let's see if we can track that down. And finally, he says, oh, wait, I have. A business card to okay. the to the administrator of that mm-hmm. plan. Every <laughs> single phone call was disconnected wow. or went to voicemail. Uh, there there was a one eight hundred number it wasn't available. So I like this idea of the database. I think that's really great. We are eventually going to track down that money though. Yeah. I've had to do that before. It took a while because the yeah. company had been purchased twice. Uh, yeah. So I had to hunt down and this has happened with pensions before too, where I had to hunt down who bought them and then who bought them mm-hmm. to figure out which HR manager we needed to get in touch with so that we could get that money for our client. But that'll be wonderful. I know they have one for student loans, so why not for money you're owed <laughs> instead of just money you owe? Yeah, and, yep. I, and I get that you are you got a lot on your mind when you're changing jobs, right? Mm-hmm. It, can, it can slip your mind. But uh, the fastest four minutes in finance, you can see that one, and you can see them each and every week delivered right to your email inbox. You can text the word FAST to 501-381-5228. Again, it's 501-381-5228. Text the word FAST, and you'll be able to sign up for the fastest four minutes in finance. Okay, so putting the wraps on today's Get Ready for the Future show, we are talking about CDs and really an overall discussion about risk and the perception of safety in those CDs. Uh, you're, you don't have to worry about a loss of principal, but you do have to worry about a loss of buying power. Mm-hmm. So what is... Uh, what are there are some other options out there that we wanted to kind of address again we talked a little bit in the first segment about mm-hmm. it but if you're looking for a little bit better uh, interest rate or, mm-hmm. or a better return on your investment on this sideline money there are other things you can look towards yes and we've talked about fixed annuities for those that are at the 59 and a half or older you know if it's just excess savings and it's truly not part of your retirement plan there's mutual funds that pay monthly dividends that you could just have sent to you in cash if you wanted to um, so that you can use it for whatever expenses you have and then of course we talked about ETFs mm-hmm. we've talked about those alternative investments so just remember there are different tools that can do that job for you that might be able to provide a little more efficiency and and a little more oomph than what you're getting from those CDs. But ultimately, you shouldn't bank your future on the performance of one Mm -hmm. product. If your only plan is hoping you get a certain rate of return or that somehow it all works out, you don't actually have 
a plan at all. So what is the plan? We talked a little bit about our income plan. That is a component of the Gen Wealth Ready to Retire process. So if you're 10 years or less out from your targeted retirement date, we talked about that retirement red zone, we would invite you to walk through the Gen Wealth Ready to Retire process. And you can do that by setting up a, an appointment. And that first appointment is complimentary. You can call 866-653-PLAN. That's 866-653-7526. We have offices in Little Rock, uh, Conway, mm -hmm. Hot Springs, Bryant, El Dorado, Northwest Louisiana, and most recently we just opened in Brentwood, Tennessee. So if you're hearing my voice today, there's a Gen Wealth advisor near you ready to talk to you. And again, that first appointment is absolutely complimentary. We do have other avenues if you're not 10 years away mm -hmm. from retirement. We've recently launched MoneyWorks. Yes, we've got MoneyWorks, um, which is kind of paired with our new podcast called Talking Sense. MoneyWorks is for those that are just trying to educate themselves about finance. It's the power of technology paired with the um, advocacy of an advisor. So that's one of the programs that we've started recently to serve that group that, you know, who are like me, who at that finance training was not something that was in my home. My parents taught me a lot of things that are, that were wonderful, but that just was not there. And then for those that are in that accumulation phase of life, you've made some progress and you're build, you've already kind of got your basics down. We also have the money guide um, system that we can work through with you. I like to say that saving for retirement al almost always feels more like throwing jello against the wall and hoping it sticks. But we can take that, look at your, your data and say, okay, what is your chance of success if you just keep doing what you're doing? And if you're in your 30s or 40s and you feel like you want to understand where you're headed, this is a great tool for that because it can kind of tell you where you're headed. And if you need to make tweaks, you've got a long time to make them, which means those won't be so impactful to your day-to-day -day life. So we're really thankful that we've kind of taken the time to really segment our approaches for those so we can really personalize it to you no matter where you're at now. You need a plan that protects against inflation, maximizes Social Security, secures guaranteed lifetime income, considers a hybrid retirement, mm -hmm. which means more of a work retirement, right? Mm -hmm. we, could, we could consider your part-time income as mm -hmm. a part of your retirement income plan, planning for long-term care, defending against taxes, and it needs to be written on paper on purpose. And that is such a valuable and really understated portion of what we do. Mm -hmm. we, we take it for granted because we do it every day. But when we communicate it on this radio show, I think it really highlights how important it is to have it written down on both sides of the table, I yes. might add, right? Because yes. we work with a lot of clients. So it's very important to have the, the why mm -hmm. right there on what we would call our summary document. Yes, because I said earlier, the process that we go through is similar, but the results are unique to the client. So mm -hmm. having that is not just for me, it's for my clients. You know, it's just like when you go to the doctor and you're in the room and while they're talking, it's just all making sense. And then you go home and your spouse says, hey, what happened at your appointment today? And you're going, something with my back. I'm supposed to take this medicine. I'm going to go to PT. It's so, our minds are just so cluttered constantly that it's often hard to remember the why and to remember all those little pieces. So that's why that written plan is important. And studies have shown having something written down and having accountability extremely increases your chances of success. It's just got a huge impact on that. It's really important to have that plan on paper on purpose also because we are not going to be around forever. That's mm. true. You know, some of us are going to retire. Um, some of us may end up exploring other opportunities who knows but your plan doesn't need to be interrupted just because one of us may not be here mm -hmm. and so that's another reason to have it on purpose uh, i'm sorry on paper on purpose is because uh your plan will be able to picked up be able to be picked up by any other advisor here and we'll keep on rolling with your plan and that's been really helpful even in, in my experience as an advisor here on our team i love that we take the teamwork approach that we do because mm -hmm. there's been times where i've had health concerns or family issues that have come up that I've had to take a period of time off from work. And I know that my clients are still being taken care of because anybody on our mm -hmm. team can pick up the notes that we've taken together and run with that. So, you know, we always use the get hit by a bus kind of metaphor, but you I know, didn't if want I to say that, but yeah, <laughs> I thought about that one. If, if I walked out of here today and I didn't go home, my clients yeah. will have somebody on this team that can take that for me and run with it, which I think is really important to, you know, if you've got that one man shop kind of dynamic, what happens if they decide to retire? Yeah. We have a few advisors out this week and our, their appointments are going to continue on because another advisor is going to be able to step in. We don't mm -hmm. have to rearrange that appointment and inconvenience that client. We're going to keep on going. 
That's the bell. You remember the okay. bell? Have you been on since we did the bell? Yes, I have been <laughs> okay. on since we did the bell. So that I is sure have. that is that is the indicator that we are almost out of time. Okay. So it means it's time for final thoughts, mm-hmm. and we always start at that end at, of the table. So you, no get to, you get to kick off. So if you've got some excess money out there and it's in a CD, and you want to look at some other options, come and talk to us. Call us 501-653-7355. I think it's important to be f- be fluid in the way that you deal with your finances in that, you know, things that worked in your past aren't always going to work in your future. So you want to make sure that whatever you're doing today fits because we do plans and have to adjust them too. That's just the way finance works. So don't feel like you're doing it wrong. Get an advocate to help you so that you can feel more confident in it going forward. Well, CDs could be a viable option for some of your mm-hmm. money. There's no question about that. We don't want to poo-poo them all the way out, right? <laughs> I mean, they definitely can be an option. But there may be other products out there that could get you better results. And certainly, if you have too much in a CD, you could be losing buying power for your retirement, just like music on a CD has been outdated. Financial CDs seem to have been mm-hmm. as well because of the dismal interest rates. So what is the answer? Well, it's a plan. And that's my final thought is what's your plan? Is your plan to just have some perception of safety uh, with some of your money and have a 401k for the risk on part of your assets and then get really conservative and just kind of figure it all out and have an arbitrary withdrawal rate? A more robust retirement income strategy may be needed. And we can build that for you going through the ready to retire process. If you're less than 10 years out uh, from retirement, it is time to explore an investment strategy that is set to build you a retirement income stream for the rest of your life. And you can do that by stepping into uh, an appointment with an advisor here. The number is 866-653-PLAN. Again, it's 866-653-7526. Anna Olive is our client introductory specialist. She'll, she'll get you situated with an advisor. You can also reach out to us via email info at getreadyforthefuture.com. The Gen Wealth Financial Team is available to you 24-7 at info at getreadyforthefuture.com or call our offices at 866-653-PLAN. That's 866-653-7526. You should personally consult a financial advisor before making any investment, and no strategy can assure success. Gen Wealth Financial Advisors is an Arkansas registered investment advisor with securities offered through LPL Financial. Member FINRA SIPC.